I'd like to talk today a little bit about how perspectives about what mathematics is impact the way we teach, the pedagogy that we use in our classrooms. And I wonder if we could consider that the perspectives we have impact the way we teach, that maybe then we can choose the way they impact, the way that we interact with our students in classrooms. So I'd like to show you, oh, I'd like to show you a couple of images. You might see three images up here if you look in the white spaces. Do you see some animals? Do you see like a dog maybe and a rabbit and a cat? But now I'm going to ask you, invite you to look at the lower left-hand corner. Do you see a baby? And now that you see a baby, do you see people? Yeah, now that you see the people sort of in the dark, shadowy spaces, do you have a choice? Now you can either choose to see the people in the dark, shadowy spaces, or you can choose to see the animals in the white space. And I have just affected your perspective. And what I'm going to suggest is that if we can admit or sort of acknowledge our perspectives, then we can choose the way they impact how we uh, let them impact how we teach mathematics. So I'm going to uh, introduce three perspectives that I think are alive and well in the United States today that impact the way that we teach. And I wonder if I could um, hear from you which way uh, you might identify with. So here's the first one. Anybody recognize the movie? So this was Hidden Figures. No spoiler alert. I'm not going to tell you too much about it, except these three women. This could be a typical equity talk, but it's not. These three women worked for NASA as mathematicians in the late 50s and early 60s when we were trying our hardest to get people into space. Well, actually, we could get them into space, but we couldn't get them home. And that sort of mattered to the astronauts a little bit. And so the movie's all about these uh, uh, mathematicians working to figure out new science in order for us to be able to get those astronauts home. If these three women worked as mathematicians for, Na for NASA in the late 50s and early 60s, I'm going to suggest that they kind of did it on their own. In other words, when their math teachers provi uh, presented math as a series of procedures and facts to memorize, I think that somehow these guys saw behind it. Somehow they saw through those rote procedures and things to memorize, and they, they sort of did real math. They created relationships and connections in their head that they were able to solve problems with. In other words, when their math teacher said something like, what is 99 plus 47? Ooh, don't think about 99 and 47. Let's line those up, and let's only think about digits here. Only pause and think about right now about the 9 and the 7. Don't think about 99 and 47, add those together, and they taught those kids the traditional algorithm for addition, I would suggest that these guys somehow saw through that. And they said, I mean, you could use the algorithm to add 99 and 47, but, but nobody is, right? I mean, you're just all thinking about 99, 100, and then what's left over, 46? So you're just thinking about 146, and then you assumed the rest of us were too. If you identify with that perspective, then I'm here to tell you the rest of us did not. The rest of us actually dutifully just did what our teacher told us to do. We lined those numbers up and thought that was the meaning of addition. We followed the rules and spit out a bunch of memorized stuff and thought we were doing mathematics. So somehow, I don't know how, for, uh, I'm going to back this up because I can. They, they made me time it and then they told me I didn't have to, so I'm going to take my time and talk a little slower than I was going to. When you somehow saw behind those procedures and then say to yourself, I'm going to teach the way I was taught because it worked for me. And I guess if it doesn't work for the rest of you, you just don't have a math gene. Not true. The rest of us can mathematize just as much as you do. We just might need to see your brain on paper. We need you to use technology and the power of visualization to help us make the same connections you made. And then we can absolutely mathematize right along with you. I'd like to introduce you to a second perspective. This is the movie Stand and Deliver. It's a little bit older. This is about Jaime Escalante. It's a little dark, sorry. The guy on the left is a teacher who actually started out as an engineer by trade. And he decided to give back to the community. And so when he retired, he went to a rough part of East LA, grabbed a bunch of kids by their bootstraps, and pulled them up through calculus. It's a great story. Highly recommend it. I'm going to poke on a little moment in the movie for a second. In the movie, the kid on the left had just flipped him off. Brand new teacher, he's got a decision to make. Just got flipped off. What are you going to do? He gets right in that kid's face and he says, oh, you're the finger man? Let me tell you what I can do with my fingers. And he proceeds to teach the kids the nine multiplication trick. As if multiplication by nine is a trick to memorize, a procedure to just mimic not real mathematics. I would suggest that this is the perspective I identified with, that I identified with fake math, that math is a set of things to memorize and rules and procedures to mimic. Not so. That isn't real mathematics. I'm a little bitter today because I actually could have understood all that stuff I wrote memorized. When he presents the nine multiplication trick, it's only for single digit facts. Okay, it doesn't help me with any other nine fact, but if I can instead, if he could have instead said to those kids, hey, you can think about nine times anything, 
as 10 times anything, and then just get rid of one of those things. Well, now that doesn't just work for single digit nines. I can do that for any nine fact. That's real math. If you identify with this perspective, if you dutifully just said, yes, I will follow your instructions. I can control this. I will follow your, I will follow your instructions, and I'm just going to go ahead and dutifully uh, memorize those isolated facts and re regurgitate or mimic those procedures that you've given me. If that's the perspective you identified with, may I um, invite you to real math? May I suggest that uh, there are some things we can do to actually mathematize our world? I have some suggestions at the end of the slide. Joe, if, uh, if you identify with this perspective, I, I invite you to begin to mathematize with the rest of us. How did I begin to mathematize? Because the first three kids God gave me came out of the womb mathematizing. I'm not quite sure what I give them credit. But they dragged me out of that rote memorizing procedure land into a mathematizing land. And I'm so grateful for that because then I got her. So this is my fourth. You don't recognize her because it's my daughter. But literally, my fourth kid came out of the womb asking, why? And somehow, this rep represents to me a perspective that's alive and well in the United States. It's a group of people who cannot do it unless they understand why. You might know this kid. This is the kid that when you say, OK, look, I've explained it three times. Pick up your pencil. And the kid finally picks up their pencil and goes, but, and you're like, seriously, write down the first thing. <laughs> like, I've explained it. Do you know that kid? The kid that goes, but, but, and then they sort of have to sell their soul just a little bit in order to just do your rote memorized procedures because they really don't want to do that. They know they have this sort of sixth sense that they could understand why. These are the students that always go, why won't you just tell me why? Well, I'm here to tell you that if you identify with that perspective, the reason I didn't tell you why is because I didn't know why. I only knew what to do, and I could help you figure out what to do when, but I didn't really know why and all the behind. Well, now I do, and I'd love to be able to share that perspective with you. Let me um, illuminate this group a little bit more. This is my daughter's text to me from an Algebra 2 class where she says, wait, this is me right now. Wait, that rule doesn't make any sense. Teacher and other students, well, that's just the way the rules are. That's how it works. Me, but that doesn't make any sense. Why is it that way? That's just how it is, girl. They expect us to memorize all these rules. Mesmerize is what autocorrect changed it to. Mesmerize all these rules instead of understanding and reasoning through it. Err, err. To which I said, goodness, what's the topic today? If you're in an Algebra 2 class, what's the one thing you're going to teach procedurally over everything else? How about logs? Oh, there it is, logs. Can you see it on the bottom there? Then she sends me this picture of the division-subtraction connection with logarithms. And she goes, why do you subtract? Divide makes no sense. Logs are stupid. To which I reply, you make me smile. Let's talk all things logs when I get home. Or when you get home from the, or when we're standing in line at the DPS because she was literally getting her license that day. So this is my daughter in Algebra 2 who knows math is figure outable because she has a mom that that's what I've been preaching for a few years. Who knows that when I get home that night, and we did, we talked all things logarithms. And what we did is we connected them to the exponent relationships that we developed the, the uh, week before. And she goes, oh, logs are figure outable. My daughter can absolutely mathematize with the best of them when she can think and reason and figure out and know the behind, when she knows why. I would ask you to think about these three perspectives. Do you identify with any of the three of them? What I really want you to say to yourself is, just because it worked for you doesn't necessarily mean it will work for all of us in the community. But I have a suggestion of what will. If we will teach real math using technology and the power of visualization to, to emphasize that it's about relationships and connections to solve problems, then we tell the why to everybody. Now, it's not about ethnicity. It's not about gender. I put friends of mine and people that I know in all different categories. I want to make sure that you know that it's, it's all of us. It depends really on how we first impacted mathematics. Well, I'd like to invite you to consider that first impact that it had on you and maybe make a choice about how you're going to think about mathematics and then teach mathematics based on the perspective that you have maybe now and not the one that you had in the past. So that's me and that's my daughter. Hey, you guys have been fabulous. Join me on Wednesday nights at hashtag MathStratChat on either Facebook or Twitter, where I literally throw out a problem and then we mathematize. People from across the world send in their strategies. That would be a way for you to begin to maybe not be that Z perspective, that rote memorized perspective. Or if you're that X perspective and you think, well, I can just teach this procedurally and they'll see behind it. Oh, actually, you'll get a sense of putting your brain on paper. Show me what you're thinking. So the rest of us can join in with you as you mathematize. And if you're in that Y group, God bless you that you made it. Keep asking why and force the rest of us to answer the why. You guys have been fabulous. Um, Mathisforgettable.com, you get my slides and some other things about real math. Thank you very much.